can never buy a Lenovo G560. Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another computer repair video. This is a Lenovo G560, which you may not be able to read. Uh, but that's okay, because uh, it's not worth reading. <clears throat> so, I want to show you this uh, terrible, terrible hinge design on this computer. Um, down here, down here we have what's left of the right hinge. And I'm going to go ahead, I haven't removed it yet, but I'm going to go ahead and remove it so I can show it to you. Or at least what's left of it. Come on. Ah, there we go. Fortunately, these mounts are okay. The mounts on this side are destroyed, but these are okay. So there's the right hinge, and there is what's left of the rest of the right hinge. Um, as you can see, probably, the breaking point between these is this thin piece of metal here. This thin piece of metal is all that there is holding this together. So, <laughs> let me get you zoomed in a bit. Th this atrocious thin piece of metal doesn't do a very good job of holding this up. And I put a new right hinge on, and there's one screw holding it, but even if I put another screw here, uh, just temporarily... Let's do this. Oh, they're all sticky. Um, even if I put another screw in this to hold this in again, I want you to see... <laughs> this is bad. Um, this, I would never buy this computer, and I'm, I'm increasingly hating Lenovo lately for a variety of reasons. Uh, I found out recently that all of their computers after a certain year have anti-third-party battery stuff that refuses to charge. So yeah, unrelated, but this hinge, okay? This hinge here. I'm going to push this hinge. I want you to see the flex. Look, look at the flex. Just look at how much this flexes when I try to push it. First of all, the base here, the base here, is flexing. It, you can already see the metal being tweaked by this. Now, I'm going to shut it. And you keep in mind that this hinge is set up in such a way that it's supposed to have a certain amount of pressure to keep the lid open, but I'm going to shut it. And I just want you to appreciate how much flexing this lid edge is doing when I try just pushing on it. I haven't even gotten it to turn yet, but if I did turn it, uh, I'm actually worried I'm gonna break it already, like I'm gonna snap the mounts out. This is a terrible, terrible hinge design. Oh my God, I really, I actually am legitimately worried I'm going to break this if I try to show it to you. Um, uh, okay. So I'm gonna open it back up, and this is what I noticed. When I open it, look how much it's pulling. These hinges are so tight. It's, and the only thing holding them together is this tab here. You're basically guaranteed to have a snap. Here's, let me hold the old hinge up just to show you where the breakage is in, rel uh, in relation to the actual mount. There you go. I hope you can see that okay. Um, yeah, it, th this tiny tab of not the best metal, it's gonna snap. I don't care what kind of metal you put there, this level of force over time, it's guaranteed to break. This is a massive design flaw. Normally what you see with a lot of hinges uh, that don't do this are they have the metal, instead of having a, a straight piece of metal, they'll have the top curve over like instead of, ah, oh, I can't do it with my hand, but you get the idea, instead of straight up, it comes up and it'll have a bend in it. Or there'll be something to add some strength for force in the opposite direction. This is just a flat plate. It's garbage. 
Um, I'm very unhappy with it. So even though I have repaired this hinge, um, I have no faith it's going to hold up. So here's another problem. Let, let's move along to another problem. So here's the computer, right? Big whoop de doo it's a computer. Um, and... If I put the computer here, here, do you see all this black stuff that's attached? Here's the other hinge that came in the hinge set, and I don't know if I'm even going to put this hinge on, but do you see all this extra black plastic on the back end of this? This is, <laughs> this is all of the plastic that this hinge mounts to inside of here. It also ripped like literally ripped the whole mount anchor out of this corner. So I just set that there. This this whole anchor's gone. It's you can see through the thing. It's just gone. Normally there would be um you know, you'd have a little hole where the screw threads are. But look look at this. Look at look at the damage here. This is this is nuts. Absolutely nuts. So, yeah. Um these Lenovo's have terrible, terrible hinge designs. This is a G560, but it's not the first one I've seen like this. I mean, look, God, just look at how much flex there is in the case. I think I actually see a crack here. Um, in fact, if I grab the palm rest, was it the palm rest? Um, yeah, I think the palm rest might have had a crack too. But this stuff, this is the flimsiest trash. I don't remember what year this Lenovo is from. But, um, I, you cannot repair these hinges and have a lot of faith that they will be reliable. So, if you are a computer shop person or even just a guy with a Lenovo G560 who's trying to fix it, um, my advice to you would be, oh, it's not the, um, cover. It's this, the bezel. The bezel was smashed in this corner. My advice to you would be if you fix these hinges on this if you do this if you go through this trouble um, you probably should try to not open and close the computer if at all possible ever again um, so what I'm gonna show you is the repair process um, I, I didn't show the hinge I already did the hinge and, and that's when I decided to make the video um, it's pretty straightforward. There's two screws here. There's four screws in the side of the LCD panel. There's no screws up here once you've gotten the actual um, bezel off. The screw goes through the bezel here, and I should actually probably remember to take this one back out because it goes through the bezel as well. Um, I'm probably actually going to go ahead and take the entire screen out. And I think, yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take the screen out, and I'm going to go ahead and reinforce all of these anchor points, not just one side. I'm going to go ahead and put epoxy on every single thing, um, because this is, this is just uniquely bad. Let's see. Uh, is there anything sticky? Oh. Genius boy over here forgot to uh, take the screw out of the other hinge. Yeah, um, I, I'm sorry if this uh, if this is not the clearest. I'm trying a new camera setup, but I've just noticed that you can't really quite see through my hands here. Um, I'm tr I don't have a boom or anything like that, um, and I don't like doing it at a weird angle with the camera behind me. It's actually quite difficult to decide where to put the cameras in the first place. <sighs> I really didn't want to take that cable off. I don't strictly have to, I suppose, but <sighs> it's, it's actually much more of a pain to put the cable back in here than it is to take it out of the screen. So just to be on the safe side, let's take it out of the screen. And uh, what we need to do is line up all of, oh no, that's really tight. That tape is exceptionally hard. Okay. Um, 
this Lenovo seems to almost be actively working against me doing this. Actually, see what I'm doing. It's this reflective tape here. Oh, sh yeah. This anchor, this anchor is busted too. That's great. That's really great. That anchor is already broken off. This anchor, it looks like it may be cracking. So I'm doing the right thing by. Uh, oh God, did that really just happen? Oh, oh. This anchor is also broken. Yeah, all of the plastic anchors on this thing, due to these hinges being so tight, um, are basically trashed. Now these anchors up here at the top, these, uh, the two top ones, they don't really matter so much, because these top anchors don't really take much force. Um, they sort of just channel it down to these bottom ones, but these bottom ones, if it weren't for this tape stuck to it, this anchor would just be rolling around. So, yeah, we're, we're going to have to epoxy all of that back together. So, that needs to be epoxied. This needs to be epoxied back to that hinge. Oh, my God. Uh, look, even my Bluetooth speaker is disappointed at this, this turn of events. Um, yeah, I'm not looking forward to this, guys. Not looking forward to this at all. Uh, <laughs> I do what did I do to deserve this okay um we have to take this hinge off because all the mounts for the one I'm re I've replaced are still good they're getting reinforced while I'm in here but all of the mounts for the other one came off as one huge chunk of plastic um oh yeah that's bad so I'm going to take this hinge off and what I'm probably going to have to do um, since, since I'm lucky actually to have that come off as one big chunk of plastic and not a bunch of little anchors I'm going to see if I can get the hinge to uh, sit down by itself and uh, in doing so um, if I can get the hinge to just stand up in the base by itself I won't have to have this screen hanging off of everything or do the epoxy work in two stages one for the screen one for the base to be attached um, the less weight you can have dangling off of an epoxy joint you're trying to get the set the better so let's move this aside um, at this point I'm also kind of worried about alignment because um, that literally took a huge chunk of the plastic right out so I left the CPU fan in I'm starting to think I may not have the luxury of continuing to leave the CPU fan in and uh, oh my god yeah that's so you can't see it very well on the camera while it's zoomed out but uh, um, this this whole chunk of plastic here came off with this one anchor, then this other... I keep saying anchor, but they're technically brass inserts. Um, they need to be unified, if you will. They're, they're kind of separated right now, so I'm going to loosen this enough to kind of pivot this plastic back onto the top of this brass insert. It Oh, it's crumbling. It's literally crumbling. Yeah, more 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 oh god I don't know about this this may not work hang on buddy uh, yep yeah, screw came out okay well this one looks good but this one obviously just disintegrated completely and this other one what happened there who hurt you uh, this other one actually the plastic that smashed off does not align so I'm thinking this may have pivoted too. All right, new plan. Um, I'm gonna loosen this one from its insert ring because it's obviously rotated wrong. All right, and I'm gonna try and get this right. Just get it to look right at least. Oh, there's another chunk of plastic. That's fun too. Um, oh yeah, that's gross. 
So the breakage of the plastic will kind of tell you in what direction everything has sprayed. It's not uh, foolproof by any means, but they have these little fins um, that you can kind of see. Oh, there you go. Yep, that's where it needs to be, right there. Um, this is this is definitely one of the more annoying parts of this job. Get it lined up. I want to keep this as one big chunk of plastic so that I can just slap one big slab of epoxy onto said chunk of plastic and just be done with it. Uh, this clearly fits through here and I need to get this to balance. So here's a, here's a good thing about this specific breakage. Um, let me get the hinge fixed up a bit here and hope that I don't smash anything worse. Uh, this specific breakage, this is the security tab for over here, the, the Kensington lock slit. So I like to use C-clamps to hold this kind of stuff. Um, I also like to use spring clamps. It just depends on what I'm doing. But I have a huge chunk of plastic that fits right back into the slot where it broke away. And I have a Kensington security thing here. Um, so there's a lot of little pieces here that may hold this together for me. Um, or at least that's what I think. But I may have just discovered a flaw in my plan. <laughs> oh, crud. Um... Uh... Yeah, I don't know about this. Oh boy. Um, I don't think that's going to work. The Part of the problem with this epoxy thing is that this plastic is so flexible that there's a good chance this epoxy isn't going to hold up so great. Um, and the problem is if you buy replacement plastics, you'll have the same problem. But... Once the whole thing is together, it doesn't flex as much um, because the wonky, cheap plastic, it kind of holds itself together, if you will. So the way I do epoxying, which if you've seen any of my previous videos, you know this. The way I do the epoxying is by having a super sticky here. I take a Q-tip or cotton swab if you want to take the brand off of it. I cut the end off. Kinda. Poorly. Whatever, it doesn't matter that much really. Cut the end off of a cotton swab to use as a spreading stick. Then I take my Loctite. Loctite plastic bonding epoxy, which is harder to get in stores now for some reason. Um, I have to order this stuff on eBay and Amazon because I can't get it in stores anymore and I don't know why. You spread the epoxy and hardening agent here. Get the cap back on. Hope that it doesn't continue to spew epoxy. Oh God. By the way, it doesn't hurt to do this in a ventilated room. Um, exposure to epoxy fumes causes you to become more sensitive to epoxy fumes. So, little safety tip, if you can have a fan running somewhere, in fact, let me do that. If you can have a fan running somewhere to take care of the fumes, Alright, if you can have a fan somewhere to help ventilate the epoxy fumes so that you don't get nauseous and puke. Because um, I got very sick off of these one day when I was not ventilating properly. So, this stuff's really wet right now. Let's go ahead and do the lid first. Since we need it to harden a little bit before we can do the hinge. Um, we don't need it to harden much, and you only get five minutes with this plastic bonding epoxy. So, you have to be 
relatively snappy with your handiwork. Um, let's see. Yeah, be aware that when you use this stuff, there's a pretty good chance that whatever you do with it, you're going to end up just kind of gluing like the hinge permanently to the <laughs> to whatever it is, um, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, honestly. Uh, ha, ha, ha. I always get a little dicey with this stuff, and I always get it on things that I don't mean to, but, um, you know, you're really, this is like the ultimate hack job anyway, so it doesn't really matter all that much. Uh, yeah. So, there we go. And that will just set by itself. Spring clip didn't help me. Get this. Be very careful not to get epoxy on your fingers and then on a bunch of other stuff that you can't get it off of. Um, I hope you can see, because if you can't, this video is going to be very boring later. Um, let's see. So this one's bad. Get a nice big glob right there so that when we put this anchor back down, it will glob up on it. Blah, 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 blah. I just like saying glob, I think. Hit my head on my microphone, put that away. Uh, and then do it like we did on the other side. We need to reinforce this a little bit. Because this other anchor, if the one anchor is broken loose, the other anchor takes all of the force instead of a portion. And I uh, want to be careful not to glue down the Wi Fi antenna too much, just in case. But uh, yeah, you need, to, you need to reinforce it as much well as you can without screwing up um, let's see and is that gonna do what I need there I don't know we'll find out in just a minute though I got some on the LCD cable let's take that off yeah remember you have a lot of parts in here it's it's not just these hinge mount deals it's everything there's See, because the plastic broke kind of cleanly, it just snapped in half, it didn't crumble. Um, I can set this down and it'll be okay. Now, I noticed a problem. I've noticed, um, yeah, that's going to be a big problem, isn't it? One of the problems is that the epoxy comes up through the insert, and that might, um, that might be a bit prohibitive, so, oof. Well, we'll deal with it later. You can actually just screw right through it. So, this is done before... Mm. Wi-Fi antenna fell in a crack. Look at this. Look at this crap. Alright. Get that out of the way. Alright, now the uh, main event. First of all, these here, these are all good. But, it's the same stuff that broke. So I'm going to go ahead, while I'm in here, and just do a little reinforcement of these posts, too. Because they're there, you know. Um, this side, the base didn't snap loose. This is the side where the hinge broke in half. So this side kind of won the war, if you will. But um, the hinge design doesn't become better just because one side proved to be stronger than the other, it's still at risk of snapping in the future. So we're just going to go ahead and reinforce all that, okay? You can see, um, and I'm not doing the best job, I admit, but um, considering this didn't break, it doesn't have to be the best job. You just, as long as you get something in there to help, something to add a little bit of strength to the otherwise not the best plastic. That's really all you need. Okay, now, now the ugly part. This epoxy is not actually not hardening nearly as fast as I need it to, but it will be okay. Um, we need to get this hinge in, and we need to get the hinge to not flop around. It it's actually going to be kind of dicey once I get it in here. So, one of the problems, I hate these, these holes here, um, I hate having to re-epoxy these holes, 
Let's see if I can zoom you in a little more. I hate having to do these holes because it's hard to do it correctly in a way that the epoxy doesn't block something. It's really hard to do it right. Um, let's see. This hinge is disgusting, but right, we need to reinforce the crumbled plastic on the side here. So the, the plastic that crumbled, you have to rebuild with epoxy. All right. Rebuild that with epoxy. It's disgusting, but it has to be done. Um, but keep in mind, this is going to go in a relatively tight space, so you don't want to put too much excess epoxy, but you want it to have structural integrity, which means it has to cover up that crack. The crack goes all the way around. You have to get it to cover up that crack or it's useless. Um, I'm running out of epoxy. Should have dished some more out, I guess. Well, that'll teach me, won't it? Um, now, this part is the hard part. I don't know... I don't even know if... Uh, I don't know if this is going to work at all, but... But I'm going to try and get some along the edges here. Um, I don't have a very good plan for attacking this. It basically just consists of glob up the edges and hope because this is actually, it's flexible plastic, so the epoxy may not hold anyway, um, because flexible material tends to push the epoxy back off of the surface. Uh, but also, it's really horribly thin plastic, and I don't know if that's gonna hold, but if I can get to hold it all, I will, I will win this stuff, this battle. Uh, ah, uh, yeah. The fit is questionable at best. Um, it doesn't help that this thing's flexing out. Alright, I actually need more epoxy. I have run out. I perhaps used too much, I don't know, but... Right here seems to be a prime place to build up a lot of it. Yeah, this is um, this is going to have to be done in two stages. I may end up forced. Oh god, that's not good. I may end up forced to just hold this hinge in place. It pushed through some of the epoxy underneath, so let's see if we can get that to line up at least. Because uh, the epoxy that's sticking out of the bottom may actually block the uh, door that holds this shut. Or the processor fan or other bits. So I think I may end up having to hold this for a few minutes until it sets enough to hold itself. And then I may have to apply another layer of epoxy somewhere. Just, uh, I don't know about this, guys. This, this may not be repairable. Oof. Yeah, this 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 may be a lost cause here. <sighs> I may have to do something a little unorthodox. Um, I'm thinking what I may have to do is glue it down to the uh, to the door itself, or even cut a piece out of the door. Ugh, those people are here now too, so. Oh, and they're calling. Someone's calling. All right. That's the end of that. Uh, this is set. I think I'm done. I will... We'll come back to this later. We're back. The, uh... Oh, look at me dropping things already. That was quick. All right. So. 
we're going to need to do a little bit more epoxying. Uh, bonus, I have a Toshiba over here that also needs epoxying. And I don't actually need much more on this unit. I think the epoxy may actually hold up. Although, it's, it's going to be tomorrow before I can put it back together, I think. Um, just because I don't want the hinges to snap. So, there is that. Um, I'm going to do that Toshiba too, so I'm going to be pretty darn generous with this epoxy right now. Let all the applied pressure come out. Oh boy, there you go. And, let's see. Okay, we're good. Alright. Oof, the smell. Oh god, the smell. So, <clears throat> I have a little bit of need for more epoxy on this uh, stupid Lenovo. This I still am marveling at how terrible the design of this thing is. It, it, it amazes me that someone made this and thought, this is fine. Um, but, but, at least at the moment, this hinge situation is starting to look up. Um, it needs more build-up. This is one of the reasons that sometimes the epoxy just has to be done in stages. Uh, you can't always... You can't always just slap it all down in one shot. You, sometimes you have to get it to where it sets and is a little bit dicey um, at first and let it harden. Then, once it's kind of hardened in place, then you can worry about making everything better. Um, now that I think about it, yeah, now that I'm thinking about it, let's see if we can take this hinge off of the uh, plastic mounts. I don't actually know that it'll come off. I don't know that it'll come off nicely. I don't know that it'll come off at all. But, if I can get this hinge to come off and let the plastics just do their thing by themselves... Oh, crud. Yeah, I think I've epoxied the hinge down, too. And that's kind of the risk you take. Uh, what to do? Can I pry the hinge off the rest of these plastics? I don't think I can, but... Oh, boy. So, I'd like to get this hinge off. Maybe... Just... I mean... Oh, come on. Uh, I really hate this. Oh, there it goes. Yep, 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 yep. Let go, let go. Oh, I got it off. I got it off. Oh, thank God. Okay. There's epoxy all over this hinge, though. Um... So, ideally, you don't get the epoxy on the hinge or your fingers. Uh, so, so I'm going to remove some of this excess epoxy from this hinge. It hasn't, you know, it doesn't attach too strongly to the metal, but the plastic, it kind of etches itself in. So what I want to do now with this hinge removed is fill in these holes where the hinge is not located. Um... You need epoxy everywhere you can get it, really, to maximize the strength of this. And it can be a bit testy to get it where it needs to go. So... The other thing is that I'm trying not to uh, make it so that installing the hinge later will be a problem because that's the other risk that you have with this is that you build up epoxy somewhere where it stands up and the hinge won't go back. Which is why once I get done with this I probably will actually screw the hinge back down just to be sure that we have a nice flat surface instead of some lumpy garbage. Once this is done, it may actually hold up after all. Um, if you can fill in all these gaps between the uh, the various mounts here, various mounts, I'll zoom in later in editing. 
And if you can fill in the gaps and get them full of epoxy such that they basically become giant chunks of plastic themselves, um, it should reinforce it to the point that this whole blobby mess becomes a functional mess. <laughs> oh yeah, this is gross. Um, here's our hinge. Let's get that epoxy out of this hole here. Just get it out. Get it out. Now, like I said, I also have a Toshiba I desperately need to get epoxy on, which is why I poured some extra here. So let's get this hinge down back where it belongs. And uh, I actually want to put the hinge on with the display portion disassembled. So my goal here is to pick up as much epoxy as I can with this hinge and wipe it off on the uh, on the sticky pad here that I'm using to dish the epoxy out. But, oh, it just occurred to me, I actually have another hinge, another brand new hinge uh, for that side. So if I, wait a minute, should I use the new hinge? See, I have a brand new hinge for this side. So I could just pick up the epoxy with the other one. I don't know. It looks like the new hinge has a bigger indentation to reinforce that side. I think I'm going to use the new hinge. So I'm going to lay this old hinge down again to pick up more epoxy and get it out of the way. Yeah, that's picking up a lot. And, uh, and I'll put the new hinge down later. Ugh, that's so gross. Uh, epoxy's not pretty. I'm just gonna say that now. Epoxy is not pretty. Um, so yeah, uh, let's get that Toshiba in here because I really, really need that Toshiba to be taken care of. Um, so this is your bonus. I might make this a separate video. Toshiba refurbished laptop, um, C655D. I actually have had a lot of motherboard issues with these, but I have epoxied this before. I think I epoxied this early on in my epoxying career, if you want to call it that. There's a bunch of epoxy already in the hole. Um, it's hard to see, but it is there. It is definitely there. So, we just need to fill this stupid thing back up with epoxy again, basically. And, uh, that, that's really it. Oh, wow. Is that an insert missing? No. Maybe? No? I actually can't tell. It's like there's a screw hole there, but there's no insert. The whole section there that's not being used for this hinge. I am so gonna use that. Just give me a minute, and I'm gonna totally use that. Um, this hinge may end up being permanent by the time I'm done, but that's fine. I don't care. Permanent is good with me. So be it. And that pretty much wraps that up. Get some epoxy under the hinge here. Now, the only other crap thing... Oh, that DC jack has been replaced as well. But the jack goes over the hinge, not under it. So the only other crap thing here is going to be... Ooh, I actually don't know how well that's going to hold up. Remember this spring clamp that didn't work for the other one? Uh, well, it might work for this. Let's find out. Oh, God. Leverage, come on. Ah. Oh, it doesn't reach very well, does it? But it might actually hold it. Oh, my God, it might actually hold it. Okay. Um, the other side over here, which isn't on the camera even, I don't think. Um, oh, the other side's bad too. Let's just, the yeah, epoxy's starting to harden and I don't have time, so let's just get this stuff in here and go. Oh yeah, that's bad. Bad, bad, bad. Bad, bad news. 
man, there's actually, I actually need more epoxy. Um, y you can actually see it on the camera. I'm surprised. I thought it was off the screen here, but it's actually more important that this get done properly than that I tell you about it. So, sorry. Um, it is what it is, as they say. So... I hate that phrase, by the way. It is what it is. Can't stand it. Like, because I just, whenever I hear it, I want to reply, what else would it be? It is what it is. There's, there's nothing else it can be, dope. It is what it is. Oh no, the hinges are uh, offset too. Great. That's really crappy. Ah. Uh, oh, this is. This situation is is not ideal. I'm, I'm just, I'm just gonna say that this is not ideal. I, I actually need a lot more epoxy here. Ha ha ha. Sucks to be me. Um. Yeah. I can kind of see why it broke. The uh, design is terrible on this. It, it, it is truly bad. So I need a flat one on the bottom and a peg one on the top. Spring clamp it is. And I really need another spring clamp. I don't want to pull this one, but I kind of have to. I, I use spring clamps primarily to hold my power strip because the table has no anchor. But, in this instance, I really desperately need these clamps to hold these hinges down long enough to set the epoxy. So there we go. They're not strong clamps, but they will hopefully at least keep it from pivoting too far from where it's supposed to be. Yeah. In this particular case, it's actually more about getting the screen to balance properly. All right. So this Toshiba is epoxy. Um, I probably can't put the Lenovo back together, huh? Set you right. so that was your bonus Toshiba video of the day. So this is curing. Let's let that sit aside and cure. Um, let's pull the display back. Also, hide this because we don't need this anymore. This just needs to go. This old epoxy pad needs to go. Something fell on the floor. Uh, great. A couple of the screws got stuck. Alright, so we need to put this. Ah, oh, come on. Seriously. Just dropping things all day long. We need to put this back together. So, we're going to need the hinge that I've decided to keep for this side. Go ahead and pry it out to lean back the way that this one already is. Um, now remember, one of the big things with this is that one of these screws goes through. So if you take your bezel, if you forget, you can take your bezel and see this screw is the corner screw. So this one actually needs to hold the hinge down first. Um, but before we screw any hinges down, let's lift this. And we need to reattach the LCD panel to the hinge, like that. Um, unfortunately, it's a bit of a mess over here. So I'm not sure how this is going to work out. But, alright, here we go, here we go. LCD panels take tiny screws. Now, it's important not to screw the screw down too tight when you get one to sit. Ah, uh, this angle is killing me. Uh, my Bluetooth speaker fell asleep again. See, I, I stopped wa uh, listening to podcast-style videos so I can bring you this high-end educational material. Where, by high-end educational material, I mean me goofing off with computers. Um, 
actually not 100% sure that these are the correct screws for this. So, and this screwdriver is a little bit difficult. Technically, I, I like to say use the largest screwdriver that works, but I find the big ones to be a bit cumbersome for these tiny screws. But the little one seems to let them go too easily when I try to feed them in and turn them. Plus, the hinge doesn't have a single screw in yet, which makes it very difficult. You kind of have to poke the screw through and then just let it sort of float into the hole. It's a terrible, terrible explanation, but hopefully you get some semblance of the idea. Once you get one screw most of the way in, you don't want to tighten it all the way. But once you get one most of the way in, um, you can get the other ones a little bit more easily. Remember to uh, make your screwdriver magnetic using a hard drive magnet or whatever. If it's not already, put the screw on the end of the screwdriver and put it through the hole with the hinge pulled away just a little bit and you'll be able to get it in there. Like I said, don't tighten it yet. You need a little bit of wobble for the remaining screws, but it is really not that bad, honestly. So I'm trying to figure out the best way to do this. I don't want to set up like three or four cameras for a computer repair shoot. Um, especially due to the limited area, but also because I just don't want to have to cut between them later, which can be frustrating, to say the least. Um, I don't want to have to cut between them later, so, you know, what do I do? Do I do I put, you know, just two cameras, or and where do I put them if I have two cameras? It would be much easier to have two cameras, because what I'm going to have to do with this one is probably, thank God it's 4K so I can zoom in and get details, but I'm probably gonna have to pan and scan zoom, which is a lot more work than it sounds. Trust me, it's a lot of work to punch in and out repeatedly. The keyframing alone is obnoxious. I wish there was a really nice control surface that did it all for me, but um, I've looked into it and I don't, I don't think there are any control surfaces that do what I need to do. Um, you know, it'd be nice if I could use some of those macros that Karen from Linus Tech Tips uses, but uh, I think I had some trouble with that auto hotkey software. It's just the stuff that he does seems a little counterintuitive in some instances. Seems that way to me anyway. You know, maybe it's just because his workflow is his workflow, and, and you know, everybody works a little differently, so. These pegs aren't lining up with these new hinges. One of the problems when you order hinges is that they have a tendency to be bent. I also just noticed it looks like this LCD panel um, may actually be bent. You know what? No. It looks like this hinge is actually a fraction too far in one direction. We need the hinge to move up relative to the LCD the slightest bit. And now these holes in these hinges, I don't know if you can see them, but the holes in the hinges are actually kind of a ovalish shape. They're not circular. The screws don't go in just one spot on these hinges. They actually can slide relative to the hinge, so what we need to do is loosen all the screws on this side, loosen all four, then pull the hinge ever so slightly that way before tightening them again. It's a little dicey, but you know, whatever. See if we can get just that, that slight bit extra but you have to loosen them enough that it will slide. Yeah, there we go, I think. It looks like it may have already been positioned that way. So I'm not, there's not much give anyway, but even if we just get a slight amount more and it makes those pegs line up, that's all I care about, literally all I care about. 
getting things to align properly because it, if I do all this work and those things don't line up right and something snaps because of it, I'm going to be furious. So it pays to make sure that this stuff lines up properly. Oh, this whole room stinks of epoxy. Okay, that fell in, that fell in. Yeah, that one's still going to... This right hinge is off by the slightest tolerance here. Um, I think I can make it work, though. So let's make it work. I mean, if that's what has to happen, that's what has to happen. Um, where are my display screws? Okay. There were two silver screws that went here, and I don't know where they went. Well, that's mildly inconvenient. Were they even silver? See, this is the other problem, is that you end up second-guessing yourself. So there are six here, and this bezel had six through it that were silver. Where are the other two? I don't know. But these silver screws... Theoretically will fit. So let's... Uh, Yeah, I'm not sure anymore. It, this is this is very annoying because this Lenovo has so many different kinds of screws that the question just becomes: uh, Is this the right one? Is this the right one? Which one is the correct screw for this hole? And uh, I think that I may have just lost that one. Oh, that's great. That's wonderful. That is truly inspiring. Just, yeah, I believe I just ruined that again. It's going to have to be fixed again. Great. 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 This design is utter garbage. Utter garbage. It, it, is, it is the worst. I hate this computer. Hate it. Okay. Alright. Do you remember how I said that the epoxy might be uh, a little uncooperative in these thread holes, that it might get in the holes in such a way that it's going to be a problem? This is a hand drill. And that bit's too... Uh, that bit's probably not the right size, but let's see. <laughs> you know, there's no bits in this box. They must have all fallen out. Oh, there they are. Yeah, there are bits. They're just not in the box. They're here. So, the screw stuck in this uh, brass insert here. And I need to get it out. And uh, it's proving to be troublesome. So, clearly, this was a bit of a mistake. Yep. Gonna need pliers for this one. All right, so be it. It's really quite dicey. Of course someone would be here. Of course they would. The second I start the damn video, of course someone would be here. Okay, okay, so, <laughs> oh, 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 I hate this computer. Um, I got very frustrated with this. Um, I, I epoxied this hinge to the back. And this one, I drilled out the epoxy with a hand drill and, um, I got a screw to go in it, but I should have just epoxied it too. I, I don't I don't care at this point. I just want the stupid thing fixed. So that's um that's how the Lenovo crumbles. So I have these these rubber things and I don't I have lost at least one screw. I lost the anchor that went in this one side. That's why I just epoxied it down. Um I can't stand these rubber things. 
and I don't even know where any given one of them went. Um, <laughs> back in the day, I honestly used to just not even bother putting these rubber bumpers back on if I could help it, although the problem is it kind of cushions the computer when it shuts. Anyway, um, also, you may or may not be able to see it, but there's a split right there where I can't get it to go all the way down, so... So be it. Um, I'm fed up with this computer. Lenovo G560. Garbage. Hate these. Hate them. Hate them. And, um, you know... I mean, I say that I hate things all the time, but this is, this is a whole new level, so... I need to put the, uh... I need to put the base back. Oh, God. I, I am not entirely sure how this is gonna go, but... Um... Yeah. Need to put it back together. Oh, that's really off. This is actually kind of... Yeah. Have I made a mistake? Has a, have I made some kind of fatal mistake here? Did I... Is this off? Did I bend something wrong? I mean... You know... What did I do? What did I do in a previous life to deserve this? So, um, hinges here. Yeah, that thing is bent. This replacement hinge is just not sitting down properly inside of here. Um, and I, but I'm gonna make it friggin' work because I have no patience left for this crap. I'm, I'm done. I'm done. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it together. I'm gonna put it together and I'm going to get it to where I can make it do what I need it to do and as long as it'll kind of hold up um, when it goes back to the customer, it'll be okay. So, let me just vent my frustration for a few more hours here. Um, at this point, I don't even know what screws went inside of this thing, so I, um, I'm at a bit of a loss. This is the really frustrating part of computer repair. Um, when you start... Uh, I just realized you can't see this at all. Well, yeah. And there's not any good way for me to make it so you can see it. Uh, I mean, I'll try. The frustrating side of computer repair is just that no matter what you do, you're gonna run into these jobs where you have to pull a small miracle out um, just to get the stupid things to work. You get frustrated. Um, sometimes there really is no way to fix anything. This computer, you know, I'm really getting tired of this computer. And, um... <laughs> I can't get these stupid holes to line up to save my life, so... And I think those screws are too long. I don't actually think these are the correct screws for this spot, but, you know, if they aren't, I'll find out, won't I? Um, actually, they might be correct. They look like they're case screws, but they may not be. Let's find out. Alright, uh, yeah, those actually are correct, so... Um... So, the, the problem is that... You may not be able to tell, I don't know, but this is the next day. This is the second day of this computer. I have laid down epoxy and... Oh no, please tell me it's not full of epoxy. God almighty. Anywho, um... No, it's not. I don't know that it's epoxy so much as that it just doesn't fit properly. Um, I've had to lay epoxy down on this multiple times. And there's a good chance it's going to fall back apart anyway. So no matter what I do, um, I have to deal with the existential dread that 
I did isn't actually going to hold up. So, you know, that's, that's, after all the work, failure is kind of, oh, you son of a bitch. Yeah, that just broke again. It just broke again over here. It just, this just broke off a second time. It, it literally just ripped right apart. Completely effortless, just pfft, ripped, gone. Um, oh, it won't unscrew. Why won't it unscrew? Because the insert, okay, this time the insert ripped out of the plastic. So, um, so maybe that screw was too long. I don't know. I, I honestly don't know. Okay, so what I was trying to express is that you don't know on day two, you may not know what each screw was that you yanked out on day one. And uh, it gets muddy no matter what you do. You'd basically have to lay out a paper template and be really careful or, yeah, way too much work. So I think I ripped this insert out because I'm dumb and I didn't. I used a screw that was too long, so it pulled the insert out of the hole. So that's going to have to be epoxied, too. Uh, the good news is I can probably figure out which screw does go in the hole now. Because it's open! So I have a plethora of small screws, and then I have a few large screws. And I, I know that that goes to the bottom, that goes to the bottom. I don't know which screws held the hinges together. And it's killing me. Um, I mean, what was it? This? Was it that? Which one was it? Let's find out. Is it this short screw? Are these the ones that hold the hinges on? I mean, honestly, that wouldn't surprise me at this point. And these short screws do, in fact, appear to fit fairly well. Um, those anchors haven't ripped out yet. That's nice. I, um, I think I'm going to make an executive decision here and permanently attach these hinges. Um, and I'm pretty sure that these short screws are the ones, yeah, I'm pretty sure these short screws are the ones that actually hold the hinges down to the base. Um, there are four of them together. Yeah, you know, you'd, you'd think that I would have been smarter than that, but I'm not. Um, I'm a fallible human being like the rest of you. <laughs> At least some of the rest of you, right? And we're going to need more epoxy. And it's a shame because I had this bundle that, you know, I already had an epoxy thing here. And eh, maybe I can reuse it. I mean, I don't need anything terribly special, so maybe I can just reuse this. I don't really feel like going and getting another Q-tip and another notepad and all that crap. I just want to get this done. I just I just want this done and over with at this point. So I'm making the executive decision to um, perform a rare procedure that is known in the industry as epoxy the hell out of it. And I feel like I've used a third of this entire tube just on this one stinking Lenovo. Um, I, if you get a G560 with hinge area problems, um, you can do what I'm doing. But at this point, I think I'm going to recommend against it. Because this is just insane and not worth the time that it is taking and the effort and the sheer amount of this stinky epoxy that I have to mix up to make it happen. And even worse, I just realized I am going to need a clamp. Ah. The good news... The good news is that the permanent attachment of those hinges to that Toshiba seems to have worked. So we have clamps now. And... The epoxy is mixed up, and if I am really lucky, I'll be able to dip here, and 
this insert will insert. <laughs> Who'd have guessed? Ah, crud. Um, I always have a lot of trouble getting these inserts to go in nicely. They don't like to go in nicely, so whatever. See, part of the problem with this whole epoxy thing is just the simple fact that the epoxy itself is basically really chunky. And uh, it doesn't matter what you do, it doesn't thin out. It's not super glue. Super glue is useless, though. That's the other thing is that cyanoacrylate, which is super glue, <coughs> is garbage for this. People think they're going to super glue plastic together, and then they find out the hard way. Super glue basically just melts the plastic, and that's the end of it. Not very helpful. Um, yeah. <sighs> this is this is this is not ideal at all, but. This is what we have to do because, you know, reasons. And I am fairly sure this isn't going to work out very well, but you know what? I don't care at this point. I, I really don't care. If this doesn't work out, this computer's junk anyway. If, if this doesn't work out, um, the customer is not going to have this computer fixed. You know, it won't be fixed, but they won't care. I know these people, actually. Um, if this isn't going to work, then they don't want it back anyway. Um, so this is really last ditch at this point. Um, and I'm sorry, customer, if you're watching this. Customer whose name I have hidden on the sticker. Um, if you're watching this, I'm doing my best, and my best cannot overcome garbage engineering from Lenovo. So, let's see if I can get as much epoxy as humanly possible off of this sheet of paper. Maybe get some over here. Because, you know, why not? Why not? <sighs> and basically, uh, I'm just going to epoxy the damned screws straight into place and everything. This is, this is very much a I don't care anymore operation at this juncture. Because I don't care anymore. I don't care. I don't care. I just want this to go together. And I don't particularly care how it goes together anymore. So let's just make it happen, I guess. Boom. One hinge in. That hinge is in. Um, we have four screws that need to go in as well. I can't get that one too tight because of the anchor, but the other anchor beside it is totally fine. So that one can be tightened down and that will help to hold the entire screen assembly up because I epoxied that down yesterday. I just realized you can't actually see the work area and I also just realized I ran over this disgusting pad. Ooh. Uh, and I just fucked it up really bad. Oh no. Sorry about the language. Um, sorry about the language, but yeah. I just ruined the epoxy job I did yesterday. Well, that's fun, isn't it? That chunk of plastic that came up that we were trying to fix. Yeah, it's, uh, it is now broken again and has to be fixed again. Um, yeah. Although maybe I can use some of this chunky epoxy that I already had to kind of patch it back up under there. I don't know. But, uh... <sighs> That's what the clamps are for. Oof. Yep. I don't like this one. I don't like this one at all. This, this computer is... basically my effing nightmare. Um, how the hell am I supposed to get it up? I don't even know. Yeah, I do. Pull it off the edge of the table here. Pull it off the edge of the damn table. And clamp it 
and hope that the clamp reaches. The clamp doesn't reach, does it? Oh. Even if it does, I don't know that it... Yeah. Okay. Let's try it. Let's try it. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, the clamp is there. It may not hold. Um, I know you can't see the work area. I got to be honest at this point. I don't care if you can see the freaking work area. Um, I really just want this stupid thing to go back together so that I can get it done. And, it, you know, if it works, it works. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But I'm tired of looking at it. I'm tired of it. This laptop is just... Like, if you could make a computer that was cancer in computer form, I feel like this computer basically wins the prize for that. I know that's a beautiful illustration, isn't it? All right. And the epoxy just stinks. It stinks to high heaven. Um, I don't like it. And I wish it wasn't here. All right. Is that going to fall into the anchor threads? Please fall into the damned anchor threads. It did, and it tightened. And once that epoxy cures, it'll be beyond tightened. It will be permanent. And I think I'm actually going to squirt a bit more epoxy and rebuild that hinge over there especially hard. You do have to be careful when you do this kind of stuff because this has speakers you look here it has two speakers and those speakers they go in the holes to the sides of these hinges so if you put epoxy in the wrong place in too large of a quantity guess what's gonna happen that's right <laughs> if you uh, if you guessed what I was thinking your speakers won't go in and then well that doesn't do you much good not being able to put the speakers back in yeah, I need a little bit more. I don't need a lot, but I do need a little bit more. Put it right here and be done with it. Okie doke. Uh, this thing is cancer. This thing is total effing cancer. I don't like it. I don't like it. But you know what? Here, here's the beauty of it. All this is horrible. But if I get this computer back together and the hinges stay put and they don't crack there's a good chance the customer will be able to use it and not have to worry about it cracking because of all the epoxy I'm building up on it. Normally I like to fix them to where you can take it back apart relatively easily as needed, although you can just pull on it and all the plastic fractures, you know. The epoxy won't hold up if you pull too hard on it anyway. Um, so, <laughs> so there are limits. There are absolute limits. But uh, anyway... I really need to get that epoxy down there in that hole. And I know you can't see what I'm doing, and I hate it, but so be it. It's just that bad. Yeah, this one, this hinge here is off by a little bit more than that one. That one is not sitting flat because of it. Ah. Can I get that clamp back off without the hinge disintegrating? It seems so. Okay. Uh, I know what to do. There. Now you can see. So, kind of. Um, so I'm going to get this hinge epoxy the best as I can by shoving it down here and uh, under the hinge and around it, whatever. It doesn't matter. As long as it works, no one's going to care. This hinge is going to have to be permanently attached. But the truth of the matter is, if it ever broke again, it won't be fixed again. So it doesn't matter. And and that's the silver lining, is if it doesn't matter, then you have free reign to do whatever the blazing hell you need to do to make it work with what resources are available. So do it. You know, take advantage of the fact that there's really no way to fix it otherwise. That it's such garbage of a design that you can't fix it in any other way. Okay. Okay. So, I am going to put the clamp back on just because there's nothing to hold this side otherwise. Alright. So, that 
epoxy job is not pretty. Uh, that really does need to lean forward more, doesn't it? And this is where it gets ugly. I need this to lean forward more. But if I put it up here, it's actually going to lean backward more. Um, there's something I can lean against it to make it lean forward a little bit more. Maybe. This is coming apart. That's great. That's, that's really great. There's a seam right here in the lid. And I think it's a pop plastic clip. I don't think I can fix it. So, um, I'm going to lean something against it because it really just needs to lean forward the slightest bit more, but I can't get it to do that. Anywho, um, yeah, it's not going to do it without a fight, anyway. Yuck. Alright, my hands are covered in epoxy. So, this is going to have to set for a while uh, before it'll be hard enough for me to do anything with. So I may as well just shove it off somewhere else and get that Toshiba over here. So I'm thinking that because the Toshiba was done in this video, I'll bring this back over and finish it. Um, this Toshiba was sort of the bonus computer because I brought it in and I epoxied the hinges together. Now, will it hold up? If I was to fix this and sell it to a customer, will it hold up? It's not flexing in any appreciable amount. I mean, it is flexing a little, but... Um, look, the hinges aren't snapping. Getting pretty rough with it now. Yeah, no problems. So, it's probably pretty safe to assume that this Toshiba will be okay. Um, so now it just needs to go back together because the hinges are nice and firm so we will leave them there power jack how does the power jack fall in now the power jack's been fixed it looks like I actually spliced a jack onto this existing connector probably from another jack so put the, put the power jack in and it has to line up you have to get it so that the hole there you need that hole to line up. The pin should be in the center of the hole when you get it all nice and lined up. Ah, pieces of plastic are falling out. That's fun. Um, these cables really need to... Let me zoom you back in. Here. So these cables need to route. Um, they have little tiny metal peg or plastic pegs sticking up that they go through to get into this hole over here where they fall back down this this pretty much is empty I think I think there are speakers but they're not there I think they sit on top of the hinge actually on this one now keep in mind this is this is important this Toshiba has been disassembled for so long that I actually don't know where um, I, I don't know what goes where, um, but as these computers go, this Toshiba is much simpler than the Lenovo as far as just how it goes together. You know, it's, it's not a huge cryptic network of screws like the Lenovo. So, should be pretty straightforward. Um, Obviously, these are speakers here and here. Um, the touchpad goes here. And the keyboard will go there. Very easy. The other question is, what's come out of the bottom? Oh, nothing, really. Um, this is actually pretty straightforward. So, assuming I haven't lost any screws, if you look around, you can see little arrows. There are little arrows. For where motherboard screws are supposed to go there is only one screw actually holding this board directly although the cpu fan may or may not be attached to it indirectly anyway it doesn't matter um look the hard drive didn't even have to come out see i can respect this this hinge design it it wasn't the best 
but it's way better than that Lenovo. And at the very least, there's plenty of material around, so if I epoxy it back together, it's not gonna break. And that's really all that matters is that when it goes back together, it doesn't break. And in fact, I may sell this to them if that other repair doesn't work, but it probably will. Um, let's see, let's see. So before snapping these edges down, I actually prefer to go ahead and try to get these little connectors in place. Okay. And there's a sound connector here that is off. It actually is not pointing in the right direction. And I'm going to have a hard time getting it to point in the right direction. What is going on here? Okay, that's the power button. This is the audio, and it has both channels. Um, it looks like I damaged the edge of this port when I yanked it originally. But, come on, buddy. Come on. If I can get it in the stinking hole here, and if the pins line up and they don't get bent, which they might, no, nah, it's not working. Does it go... Does it go the other way? Does it have to go that way? I doubt it. But we'll try it. I'm open to the possibility that I'm not right. I mean, I don't know. It's been so long since I disassembled this, I could have bent a pin and not noticed. Uh, yeah, it appears to go this way, not that way. Well, there you go. Um, it's, which I think it does. Did I bend a pin? Oh, I need to check it. Might have bent a pin inside the connector and just said okay the pins in here are on the top so it actually does go with the flatter side up but that doesn't explain why I can't get it to actually go um, now if I broke it on that side because I pulled it at an angle it's possible that one of the pins is bent a little oh yep there it goes I cocked it to, towards the direction that looked a little broken. Um, so I probably inadvertently bent the pin a little bit when the side popped out of the plastic shell there. And uh, when I cocked it over to the other side, it apparently caught the pin that was bent and pulled it back into conformity. These are flip lock connectors, pretty straightforward if you've taken a computer apart. and. At this point, I am confident in snapping it back together. Here, lots of plastic clips all the way around. Can't stand the things generally, but at least it'll hold it. There are no screws uh, under this keyboard, so I can just take the keyboard, put it back in. This is the kind that slides backwards, so because it's the kind that slides backwards like this, we'll just move it up. You have to get the little compression thing out first. That, that would be helpful, wouldn't it? And get that in there and get one end and get the other end and ah, finagle both of them somehow. And the keyboard's reattached. And the keyboard screws down. Now here's the other problem. Um, uh, where are the screws to this? And the problem is I actually don't know where the screws are to this. Uh... All right. Let me tell you my secret. When I salvage computers, I salvage screws from laptops. Now, I don't know what kind of screws went in these holes, but I can tell you they're probably relatively short and relatively flat. They don't have to be perfect. They have to have the same thread and they have to roughly fit. This screw appears to fit very nicely. So let's use this as a guide to pick a few more from the bin. It's pretty easy to see when they're similar. So, actually that one has a smaller head on it. But will it fit? Well, it does fit, in fact. 
it does fit. So, even though the head is smaller, all that matters is that it fits. And that's just it. Uh, that one's got, I think that one might be a longer screw, and you don't want to overdo the length on them. So it might, well, we'll keep it out tentatively, right? Because you don't know. I mean, I, I don't really care all that much as long as they all fit. So here, so I got four candidates here. Yep, so these spares that I've pulled all probably fit just fine. Do I have a shorter screw that'll fit than that? Um, maybe? I don't know. But we'll find out, won't we? Eh, I don't think... Yeah, and the other problem is getting the screws out of your spare bin is uh, never easy. It's kind of a nuisance. Yeah, just a bit of a pain. Okay, so the, the keyboard is attached. The keyboard is screwed down. The little strip that goes at the top of it all. Um, I actually don't remember how it goes in. But these Toshibas, the, the strips usually just snap. Like that. Ugh, look how dirty that screen is. I don't know if you can see how dirty it is, but it's pretty gross. Okay, so Toshiba's back together. Uh, more plastic is falling out of it. That's okay, I don't care as long as it stays together relatively. Um, this could be a problem, though. There are four of those weird flat screws. Um... Here, what a coincidence. Like this, these, these weird flat screws that don't have very long shafts on them. And, oh, that takes a double zero Phillips. I don't have one of those just lying around. Um, I mean, I have one, but I don't feel like breaking it out if I can find a substitute that doesn't require that. But those little flat screws get lost really easily in this heap of other screws. The heads are really large, but the rest is really not. Look, see? That one took a double zero. This one actually takes a number one Phillips. But the other problem is, I don't know... These may not even be for Toshibas at all. Like, these flat screws may simply not match up. They don't. This one doesn't. Um, the shaft is too big. It's probably a double zero, but I wonder if this number zero would fit it. Yeah, it fits a zero. So, does it fit the hole? All right, so the ones with the tiny, um, the big flat ones with the tiny shafts are correct. So, this is too big. Let's go ahead and get these out of here. If they don't match, let's get them out so I don't search through them again. All right? And this is just tedious, and I hate doing this because it can be really annoying, especially if it's like this, where I don't have um, I don't have any of this properly sorted. This probably won't fit, actually, now that I'm looking at it. I don't think that'll fit at all. I don't know where that came from, but it looks funny. Actually... Actually, um, I have four bins of spare laptop screws, too. Not just two. It's just that I don't really feel like looking through all of them right at the same time. Um, strictly speaking, I probably don't have to have these here. Um, but this is near the hinge. So if I was to only put one of these flat screws right here uh, near the hinge would be where I would put it. Because that's going to see some flexing. Some of these other ones won't, but that definitely will. And the other good news though is that like this is F6. They're probably all F6 on the bottom. This is F3. That's probably a keyboard screw. No, that's a CD drive. But all the rest of them look like they're F6. So if I can find what the hell an F6 really is, 
um, I will be able to just stick an F6 in there. So I don't think I'm going to find another decent flat-headed screw in a reasonable time frame. So I think I'm going to skip them. Just move on to figuring out what an F6 is. An F6 is probably this. It's a pretty standard looking size. Um, but I don't know for sure. Let's pick a hole and see if it seems like... Yeah, that's not working. That, um, I don't know if the thread doesn't match or what. But let's find out. Is this an F6? I don't know. Let's find out. You, you basically just want to pick a hole that you can put a trial screw in and do it gently and see if it feels like it's bottoming out or if it's getting to the end of the screw head. If you start feeling extra resistance, um, but it doesn't look like the screw's gone all the way down to the head, then you know you don't have the right thing. So this is probably an F6, or at the very least, it's close enough to an F6. So let's find a heap of those. And now the other thing is I don't strictly need, um, I don't strictly need, this isn't this guy's freaking computer anymore. Let's take it off. Here. I don't strictly require um, screws that are exactly the same as that. I also don't strictly require um, all of the screws to be identical to that. The head on that might be too large. I'm not sure. Let's find out. Let's find out what we're really up against here. Hmm. So, the head on this might be too big. So, let me try it. Yeah, something's wrong with that one. That won't work. I think the thread might be different. See, and if I've pulled screws from Toshiba's before, and I have, I have pulled from this exact model, um, I should have them on hand. So, if I have to sort of triage where I'm putting these screws, if I have to pick... I'm gonna put one here because that's a hinge screw. Here because that's kind of a, that's a hinge screw. Here and here, basically the four corners. And then when you fill the corners, the left and right sides are are important because they take a lot of flexing and pounding. Um, screws that go through the middle, not not so much, because the screws in the middle, um, they they don't. Just in general, they don't see the same kind of force. Um, it's the screws around the edges that really get trashed. And so, my goal is to get these edges taken care of. That didn't do anything. And it's possible there's not even a... Oh, shit. <laughs> that almost ended badly. It's possible there's not even an insert over there to put it in. I don't know. There's one over here, though. But yeah, that side, the uh, entire screw insert may have been lost. Yeah, I feel it going in, but I don't feel it bottoming out, so I don't know what's going on there. So I'm just going to let it be there, and that's the end of it. And I'm not going to worry about it. Let's see. I mean, I see, I see a screw insert right there. I just don't know what screw goes into said insert. So... You know, um, what am I supposed? To, what, what am I supposed to put in? It's possible that an F6 is longer than the ones I've been picking. What's this? You know, I don't know. Is this maybe longer? Um, if there's an insert down there that I can't reach, maybe an F6 is a longer screw than what I've pulled. Yep, I think that was exactly what was going on. F6 is longer than I thought. So. I may need longer screws for some of these holes. So that's good to know. Yeah, takes a bit. Um, I should go ahead and get this corner here. Yep, that's good. Now, if you put a screw in that's too long, you're gonna have the thing bottom out and it's gonna get ugly.
I do like to get at least one, since I don't have these back ones, I do want to get this one here. Um, and then over here, because this is a hinge area too. I really like to put the most reinforcement near the hinges if possible. And that's about it. Uh-huh. 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 What to do now? So ideally I'd get as many screws in as I can. I don't know that I can. But you know, as long as there are enough to hold it together, you'd be surprised how few screws you actually need to hold one of these together. It, it can be quite astonishing how little is needed. So that screw's probably too long. The thread fits, it's just way too long, I'm pretty sure. This is probably more appropriate. So yeah. If I can get one here, I'll probably just stop messing with these. A lot of these computers take similar screws. So... And it would be nice if I had all this categorized in some way. But I don't. So there you go. Yeah, so it's missing some screws. I don't think it's a huge deal. I don't think it's going to make the computer fall apart to not have them. But if I can put one more, you know, just for reassurance, I think I might. I think I just might. There are quite a few screws in here. And a lot of them are short for some reason. Why are they all so short? Pretty strange. Uh, not that many short screws. I also need one for the CD drive, so that's, that's something that does kind of need to be considered, is that the CD drive, DVD drive, whatever, uh, it's still a thing that exists and has to be dealt with. Wait a minute, did I just find another wafer-shaped screw? Did I? Did I? Did I just find one that'll work? I did. Good. See, part of the problem is this is a very thin plastic strip. So, a current affair noise. Yeah. Thanks, telephone. Uh, no one's here, though. So let's shove this back in. Oh, God, please let this be the right drive. Wait a minute. This is the Lenovo drive. I've been tricked. At least I think it's the Lenovo drive. Yeah, gotta be. Come on. None of these drives are going in. Uh-oh, did I screw something up? <sighs> Is there an anchor through there? No, there's not. Which means it does have to go through here, doesn't it? Yes, so this has to be the correct drive, right? It doesn't look like... So why is it not going? It won't go. What did I mess up? Okay. Okay. Let's do this the hard way. Why won't you go? Oh. That'll do it. That'll do it. Whoop. I hope you can still hear me as my audio recorder just decided to go cliff diving. Um... Yeah, so remember when I was talking about screws being too long? Guess what? Those keyboard screws? Yeah, this one's too long. It's sticking out in the CD area. It's too long. These are supposed to be shorter. So, I have to find a short one. Which is unfortunate. I don't know. There we go. Okay. So yeah, now you see part of the perils of not knowing where the screws went and having to replace them is if you want to put your CD drive in, maybe you can't. I don't know. 
but that sure was obnoxious. Um, and this CD drive takes a particularly small shaft, so I'm actually not sure what kind of screw to put there, but let's see if this fits. That looks like it came off of a Lenovo warranty sticker, actually. Um, but that's a really small hole, dude. Really small. Uh, yeah, no, um... See, it, it takes an F3, but clearly the shaft is much smaller than your average uh, case screw on this bad boy. So let's try this one with a teeny tiny... This may have been an LCD panel screw, actually. Yeah, it worked, but I'm pretty sure that's a screw from the side of an LCD panel. Anyway, 2 gig, 2 gigs. This has 2, two gig DDR3s. Um, I don't know what kind of hard drive it has in it. It has a hard drive there, so there's that, which is nice. Let's find out what kind of hard drive it has in it. Just out of curiosity, it has a 320. 5400 RPM 320. Probably the original drive. Probably not a very fast drive. Throw a 120 gig solid state in it, and it'll suddenly become a speed demon. Um, I actually don't even remember what... Um, processor or anything is in this but I know if I throw an SSD in anything with DDR3 basically um, except maybe a Celeron 900 that the machine will suddenly be perfectly serviceable alright let's see if I can avoid getting caught on fire there we go the battery's probably dead This universal So there we go. We have a charge light. Does it work, ladies and gentlemen? It probably does. I'm not a hundred percent sure, but there it is. Toshiba. What does it have in it? An AMD V140. Damn it. Okay. So it's basically like the Celeron 900 of AMD chips. And I just put it all the way back together. Okay. Okay. So uh, it's the next day again. And I'm about ready to put the cap in this um, <laughs> this terrible Lenovo saga. Uh, the hinges, I don't want to twist them uh, until I get it reassembled, but I'm going to try it once just to see if everything's going to crack out immediately. They seem to be holding, but look at that flex. Look at this. Look at this flex. It's just, it's ridiculous. So, all right. So I've pretty much permanently attached these hinges. We have gone over that. Uh, yeah, this whole thing is just terrible. So, um, this wireless cable has to go back under all these stinking clips, and it won't stay put. Um, the speaker won't go in if it doesn't stay put. Yeah. That's a really frustrating that it won't stay put, but uh, such is life. The black one and the display cable have to go under. And this is where it gets a little ugly. Um, oh, you may not even be able to see it, but the, the display cable just goes here. That's pretty straightforward, right? Um, the black one has to worm under here somehow and then come back to the wireless card. Uh, yeah. Hmm. 
<sighs> you pretty much just have to throw it through and pray a little. All right, and all these wires here are supposed to be bundled. This tape is useless now, so we'll throw it away. They're all supposed to be bundled and kind of carry over here, because God knows what goes over them. <sighs> and I don't have any tape, so they're just going to have to kind of get pushed really hard, and that's that. I am so ready for this to be over. Okay. I'm going to put this cable here back in this connector. See, I didn't have to take the motherboard out, but I did have to remove the motherboard at least enough that I could pull it up, which was ridiculous, um, because I had to get the Wi-Fi cable out from underneath it, and the black cable would not come out without some coaxing. So now I get to play the same game I played yesterday, where I take all these screws and trying to figure out where, what, what screw goes where. Um, the flat screws obviously go underneath on flat things, but there's a CPU fan that I think is this one. And the problem with the way I've disassembled this mess is that I have not done the best job of keeping track of what goes where. I'm pretty sure these actually go in the and these go to the fan. And the fan is one of the first things that I had to take out once I got it partly disassembled. The motherboard has a screw somewhere. Where is the screw that holds the motherboard down? See this little arrow? There's a little arrow right here on the board. That arrow indicates that a screw goes there to hold the board down. So, let's find a screw that seems to be all right, I bet this screw goes there. It looks like it goes there. There it goes. Beautiful. Now the motherboard is held down again. I hope. Okay, what's next? Well, the top can go on, but let's see. This thing has all kinds of wires and they're everywhere. So, a little thing to note, when you take it apart, you have to pop this speaker cable here before you're able to completely remove the lid. So, uh, let's make sure that all these exposed connectors, of which this one doesn't go to anything, one, two, three connectors on the top, and we have one, two, plus three showing here, so it's probably safe to go ahead and, oh, come on, yeah, you're not going to be able to see that, are you? You have to reattach the speaker connector here to here, okay? So we're going to go ahead and do that now. Um, you can't see it, but, you know, you just, you, you push it in, it's, it's pretty darn easy if you've done laptops at all. And if you haven't, well, welcome to my version of hell. So, we'll put this together, and there's, like, one screw that holds the top down. <laughs> I just realized that this tape covers the speakers. <sighs> yeah, it's, it's still useful to hold the speaker wires down so the keyboard doesn't get jammed, so we'll just put it back. This is your power button and LED board, I'm guessing, because it goes to power buttons. Yeah, there's a couple buttons and lights up there, so that's probably what's going on there. And attach that. You have a touchpad here, and it has this obnoxious plastic crap over the, ah, yep, that you have to hold out of the way long enough to get under there, push, push, okay, that's done, one screw goes here, and the funny thing about it is, it's the one screw that uh, has Lenovo all over it, and I have no idea which one that is, because I made a fatal mistake with these. Yeah, 
this point, it really is just a screw solving free for all. Um, I don't know what screw went there. But, given the depth, it doesn't have to be too deep. That's okay. Oh, wait. Is this it? Yep, look. That's it. See, that, that shorter screw is it because it still has some of that BS warranty label on it. So let's put that short screw there. Oh, look, it says 2.5 by 4. I could have just read the guide. I could have literally read the guide instead of making a jackass of myself. Lovely. So this has been going on for three days. I don't know if you, if you guys have noticed, but <laughs> this is literally the third day of working on this stinking Lenovo. Um, mostly due to needing to epoxy it repeatedly because every time I'd do something, the epoxy job would fall apart. Uh, keyboard, the keyboard, the line. It always drives me nuts when the lines on the keyboard connectors don't line up with the, uh, why is this not going? Oh, no, it's one of those. Okay, this is one of those stupid connectors where it goes underneath the compression fitting, not over it. That's why. Yeah. So it's not one of the ones where the line is supposed to stick out. It's one of the ones where I'm an idiot. All right. So now that we've confirmed I'm stupid, there are two keyboard screw, three keyboard screws that come up from underneath, but those will be gotten later. Push the keyboard down as best as you can. You see where I've epoxied these hinges, how nothing goes together right anymore? That's fine. I don't care. I really don't care. Um, squish them as best as you can because we're going to put the screws in and if you're religious pray to whatever deity you got handy because we're probably going to need their help to finish the job now I just noticed there are four screw holes here and I have three flat screws so it is entirely possible that I have lost something underneath something else or Otherwise, royally, <clears throat> if you'll pardon the expression, screwed up. Let me get this microphone over here where it's a little easier for you to hear me. Yeah. I hope you can hear me. Okay. So I'm kind of trying new setups um, for the video. And one of the problems with the, the place I'm in right here is that I don't have any lighting set up. So we just have this one LED lamp up here, and that's basically the end of it. Now, you, you notice too that for the prior video segments, I had the camera behind the table over here, and it pointed down. I don't feel like that got very useful angles in several cases. flat screw that goes here, but it doesn't matter that much. Um, everything's making noise today. It doesn't matter that much, so I'm not going to worry about it. What I really want to do, first of all, um, here's where... <laughs> here's the, the hinge, and this, this like thin plastic is the only thing holding the hinge down. It's garbage. Like, even the bottom plate, the bottom plate here, even it seems to, see how a tab goes here and a screw goes here, even it serves as part of the hinge assembly, like the hinge reinforcement. It's a terrible design because those things aren't actually attached. So, I want to get some hinge screws in if I can, um, and I don't know if I'll be able to due to my uh, judicious use of epoxy. So, yeah, maybe we uh, get one of the screws in the mirror. Let me actually adjust this camera down a I think it's down a little bit here. Okay. Let's see if I can get it. All right, as it'll go. put this uh, this screw in first and hope that it's not too long. <laughs> There's a lot of them like that. Actually, I just noticed there are two screws that are particularly longer than all the rest. Um, and I 
guarantee you those are hinge screws, and I guarantee you I just shoved one right into a hole that it wasn't supposed to go in. Because that's what I do. I put things in the wrong place. Look at that, look at that, look at that, look at that. Look at that beautiful planning where uh, my hand is in the way and you can't actually see. That, that's, that's, oh, look at that awesome, great repair video, you can't even see it. The screwdriver goes, I'm not even lower this. Below my hand, you can probably get a better view. I'll try that. Let's, let's adjust this. Let's see if you can get a better view. Yeah. I mean, it's not superior, but if I'm using a screwdriver, you can at least see where the end goes now. That, that's fun. Okay. Um, there's two long screws, they go into the hinges, and this edge here in particular. See, I think I'm hitting epoxy. When you hit the epoxy, you kind of have to back out and keep going forward to crush it into the thread. Because this, these two screws here are particularly important due to being the two screws that go into the big metal lug on the bottom of the hinge. They, uh, they are a lot of the support for the corner. So, they're kind of important. They don't go into a brass insert, they actually go directly into the hinge. I don't think I can get that any tighter, it's not letting me. So, we're just gonna pretend that's done. All right, more screws, more screws. Um, I didn't properly film the disassembly. So, assembly is the reverse of disassembly. There's usually not too much. Taking it apart's the easy part, so you can sort of look at this as a disassembly guide in reverse. Um, I'm sorry that I went ahead and jumped the gun on this, but I didn't know it was this bad, and I didn't know I was going to do a video on it. And uh, once I got into it, I knew I had to do a video on it because this truly is a unique disaster uh, specimen. <clears throat> specimen. <sighs> keyboard screws. Now are the keyboard screws the long screws or like there's all these short screws that I still haven't put back. In fact, here's what I'm thinking. Maybe just ooh. Maybe just maybe what I should really be doing here. not dropping long screws in place yet but rather trying to get find the short screw locations um, okay the hard drive definitely definitely the hard drive took two short screws to hold it in place I know that for a fact uh, there's one screw that's really tiny and I bet that goes to uh, like a CD drive or something um, two short screws here Pretty easy, all right? Let me get some more brightness for you. There we go. A little bit more brightness, never hurt anybody. All right. All right. <sighs> there is no good angle for this, and it would be really helpful if my hands didn't block all the light. Uh, look at this. This is an important tool in the toolkit, the uh, coffee. Mm. Me so thirsty. Okay. So, the wireless card only had one screw. The CD drive takes a screw. There are no screws under the front of the CD drive. So let's shove that in there. And I think it also takes a standard short screw, not one of the... I want to know where this teeny tiny... I have a teeny tiny screw. I don't know where this teeny tiny screw came from, but uh, I... Yeah. I, I, I've got to figure out where that goes. Um, CPU fan. <laughs> it just occurred to me that might be important. Yeah, 
put the fan back. The fan has a connector here. Uh, yeah. The fan has a connector here. And I don't exactly recall how to put it back. So it's actually really hard to reach. <laughs> okay, there's two little tabs. If you look at the end, there's two little tabs that stick out. And then if you look at the connector, there's two holes in the edge, in the side, the long side, for those tabs. Um, this might actually require some pliers to get... No, stop it. Go down there. Have I mentioned I don't like this computer? I don't feel like I've mentioned that enough. I do not care for this computer. I... If I see this computer, if I see any computer like this come in with hinge problems in the future, I'm charging them a lot of money, or I'm just not doing it. Um, fun aside, if you have a machine where the display gets destroyed, you can pull the wireless antennas out, and you can probably put them, even with just some tape, where the hinges used to be inside the case, and assuming the computer supports an external display as the primary monitor, you can basically just yank the top half off and use it as a desktop. In fact, a lot of computer people do that um, with busted up laptops if they need a computer in a pinch. Um, they just, you know, oh, the screen, you know, is broken off the computer. Well, what we can do... Alright, I think that might be a bit too long. What we can do is rip the screen off and back in the day before Wi-Fi you didn't have Wi-Fi antennas to deal with at all so that did also make things a little easier but hey we can take the top half off and uh, and pull the LCD cable out and so on hook up an external display and since it will boot with an external display as the primary monitor um, we don't have to worry about it it'll just it'll just work you know, I always like to trademark. Just work, trademark. Uh, yep, standard small screw. When I say standard small screw, what I'm referring to, it's not actually some kind of a standard, so much as um, this computer has big screws and small screws generally, from what I can see. Most of the screws are either long or short. And when I refer to a standard small screw, I'm actually talking about the ones that are short. Now the epoxy is getting in the way of the fan going back in. And I knew this might happen. Great, someone next door really needs to, uh, I swear man, one of these days I'm gonna stop that guy and I'm gonna tell him how to fix his idle air control valve on his Honda it's getting really old. Oops. The epoxy's blocking me. Okay. Alright. So, I hear something that I'm probably going to have to deal with. Um, So I'll probably just let you watch the rest of this video in silence, and if I have to leave, I'll just cut it out in post. All right, and that's that. I hope I may reassemble the rest of this in silence. Um, if if that's what happens, then we're gonna have to uh, we're gonna have to put some music on for you, I think. Yeah. That's what's gonna happen. Still want to fix that guy's Honda. It's so annoying. Okay, that may actually be where that little screw goes. Because it's not taking this big screw at all. Ladies and gentlemen, that is not a winner. I don't know what kind of screw goes there, but it isn't that one. So... Um, in the worst case, 
two out of three ain't bad. That, that screw over there probably isn't required to hold this in place. But, uh, one small screw left that has been used. One small screw left that has not been used. We'll put it there and see if it goes. I can't get any screws to go in this hole for some reason. It's driving me mad. Oh, nope, that took. That took. We have a winner. All right. Wi-Fi antennas. I mean, at this point, there's not much else to say. You know, just a bunch of screws around here. Wi-Fi antennas there. It, it, it's straightforward look. I mean, you know, this is not a particularly complicated thing. Um, Wi-Fi antennas are going to go here, both of those, and we've got all the screws in the fan assembly there, and um, that, that's basically it. Door, battery, yeah. Um, there's the display cable and the CPU fan cable, and pretty much it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and end the video now because uh, being out of focus, it's so beautiful. So this thing's terrible. I don't like it, and I would like for it to not exist. Anyway, um, that's the end of that Lenovo project. Um, <laughs> happy hinge gluing. <laughs> Oh, uh, sometimes these hinge glue jobs are a lot of trouble, and you really have to make a decision when you get in there and see how much material is left to work with as to whether or not it's worth the trouble. Sometimes you have to permanently attach the hinges, so be it. Anyway, um, never buy a Lenovo G560. Take care. <laughs>